India's philosophical ethos sees the world as one large, interconnected family. India's approach has always been consultative, outcome-oriented, demand-driven, people-centric. India has also emerged as an education and healthcare hub in its region. As the chair of the G20, we will continue to engage proactively with the global south. Our prime minister's call for one earth, one family, one future will continue to undergird our efforts. To say that we are perhaps witnessing the most difficult phase since the Second World War is not an exaggeration, but a reality. The road ahead is therefore difficult and challenging. As you have rightly pointed out, as members of the United Nations, we have an onerous responsibility. We need to work collectively in a collaborative manner to find sustainable solutions to the development challenges. May I assure that my delegation will work with you and your team to realize the objectives set out in your priorities. In this way, we also look forward to actively participate in the water conference scheduled in March and the three scientific briefings that you are planning next month. Mr. President, India's philosophical ethos sees the world as one large, interconnected family. As a developing country, we remain concerned about the increasing fragmentation of the international landscape. In response to what you have stated about reforming multilateralism, we believe that reform of the multilateral institutions is now an urgent imperative. These reforms should focus on giving voice to the concerns of the developing world and reflect the realities of the 21st century. Turning to sustainable solutions that you alluded to, I wish to point out that in our partnerships, India's approach has always been consultative, outcome-oriented, demand-driven, people-centric, and respectful of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of partner countries. Lately, India has also emerged as an education and healthcare hub in its region. To cite a few instances, we give out thousands of scholarships each year for foreign students to study in India. There are similar success stories in our efforts towards capacity building. We have also launched Mission Life, a worldwide program to assist the world in its battle against climate change and promote a healthy way of life to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As the chair of the G20, we will continue to engage proactively with the Global South to factor in the priori priorities of the South into the G20 process. To this end, and as many of you would know, India has recently organized the highly successful Voice of the Global South Summit virtually. A total of 125 countries participated in the meetings spread over 10 sessions. Our Prime Minister personally drove the opening and closing segments of the summit. A number of new initiatives have flowed from these segments as concrete outcomes reflective of our commitment to deliver on the priorities of the Global South. As I close, Mr. President, I wish to assure that India looks forward to working closely with all partners of the United Nations, convinced as we are that in order to find solutions to any of the global challenges, the global north and the global south need to come together. Our Prime Minister's call for one earth, one family, one future will continue to undergird our efforts.